in the in the diabetic patients you know the blood sugar level is generally it's generally very high right so what happened is that there is a link between high blood sugar and a inflammation in the body so if you have a high blood good uh, blood sugar or uncontrolled blood sugar you have a, a very low grade inflammation going on in your body already so you have a baseline so you have a baseline inflammation already before you getting infected right but but as you know that the covid 19 when you somebody gets infected it induces a cytokine storm right in general so inflammation is go, basically goes up so since the diabetes patient diabetic patient already have a basal inflammation so it adds up to the overall inflammation so that is one of the reason that is one of the reasons why the diabetic patients you know are the more susceptible to the severity of the infections okay Hi, welcome to Biotech Talks. Now, today we are going to discuss about COVID-19 and diabetes. Now, you might have heard this, that if someone is already having diabetes, then COVID-19 makes things more worse in that patient. But the fact is that uh, if someone is non-diabetic, then there is a possibility that that individual might di develop diabetes because of COVID-19 infection. Yes, that is possible to an extent. So why this is happening? That is what we are going to discuss today in this podcast. And for that, we, we have Dr. Chakrabarti with us. He has done his PhD dissertation work from the Indian Institute of Chemical Biology, Kolkata, then did his postdoc in infectious diseases, inflammation and metabolic disorders from the University of Illinois and the University of Virginia, US. He was also an assistant professor in a US medical school. Then he is a co-inventor in a key US patent that aims to treat diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. Currently he lives in Kolkata and he is founder and director of a virtual biotech company known as uh, biotech Cons consulting services so dr chakrabarti in this podcast dr chakrabarti has explained the relationship between covid 19 and diabetes in a very simple and effective way and i know that you are going to enjoy this podcast so let's start with it hello sir how are you i'm good hi how are you I'm also I'm also doing great. So great. Starting from the first question of this podcast, why do people with diabetes develop severe COVID? Okay. So uh, so the diabetes. You know, when you talk about the diabetes, there are two types of diabetes. Yes. One is type one diabetes, another is type 2 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, what's, what's going to happen is that, you know, in our tissue, in our body, there is a, a cell, you know, the islets. Uh, in the islet tissue, there is some insulin producing beta cells, right? So in the type 1 diabetes, these, these cells are, are just, just destroyed because the body, you know, uh, it's, it recognizes it as a foreign and it, it elicits an immune response against the beta cells. So the beta cells get destroyed, right? So there is something wrong with this type 1 diabetic. See, here is the thing. Our immune response should, you know, recognizes the foreign antigen, right? Okay, yeah. And elicit an attack against the foreign antigen, right? That is a, that is a typical one. But in that type 1 diabetes, the, our immune system is recognizing its own tissue. And it's just destroying the beta cells, specifically the side of the beta. So there is a self non self distinction, you know, in the body, you know. So it's lost in the type one diabetes. So what end up happening is that since the beta cells are destroyed, so there is the insulin are not being produced. So our blood sugar level, you know, it goes really high. And uh, in the type two diabetes, so what's end up is happening is that in the the insulin in the, our body can produce insulin. But the thing is that the insulin doesn't work that very well because of the some resistance mechanism, insulin resistance, right? So in that case, so the type 2 diabetes can happen for many reasons. You know, it could be the diet, it could be the lifestyle factor, and uh, it could be some of the genetic predisposition is also there in the, for the type 2 diabetes. But the interesting thing is that the type 1 happens a very small percentage of the population. 
and and next thing is that the type one is mainly mainly occurs in the younger individual. Yeah. You know, it's around you know, ten to fifteen or something. But the type two is actually starts at the age of thirty five, right? And then it can go on and go on. And actually, that severity of the type two diabetes increases with the age. Okay. So, so the reason I'm telling you is that first. the type 1 diabetic the, the prevalence of type 1 diabetic is very low and if it happens it happens in the younger individual but the type 2 prevalence is very high and it occurs and and the prevalence is very high in the majority of the population right so so uh, so it goes to tell you that you know the covid 19 patients the type 1 so if some type 1 patients you know gets covid infected right so the severity of the disease is somehow less it has been shown that severity is less this is probably because of the fact that because because they are in younger individuals right yeah. so the younger individuals are less susceptible to the uh, uh, to the covid 19 infections the so reason we don't know still don't know but uh, but uh, but uh, but what we are seeing that mostly the adults are mostly susceptible to the covid 19 as opposed to the children right so this may not be entirely true because we start getting you know children getting vaccinated as well also but in general the adults are more susceptible to the covid-19 infection compared to the children so so uh, uh, so so the question is that so the type 2 diabetes then you know they are more susceptible to the severity of the covid-19 disease yes. so so you ask a great question why the severity of the covid-19 disease is more in uh, you know see uh, is more intense in the type 2 diabetic patient or in the diabetic patients right so the reason is that there is a twofold reason so the first reason is that uh in the in the in the diabetic patients you know the blood sugar level is generally it's generally very high right so what happen is that there is a link between high blood sugar and a inflammation in the body so if you have a high blood uh, blood sugar or uncontrolled blood sugar you have a, a very low grade inflammation going on in your body already so you have a baseline so you have a baseline inflammation already before you getting infected right but but as you know that the covid 19 when you somebody gets infected it induces a cytokine storm right in general so inflammation is going basically goes up so since the diabetes patient diabetic patient already have a basal inflammation so it adds up to the overall inflammations yeah. so that is one of the reason that is one of the reasons why the diabetic patients you know are the more susceptible to the severity of the infections okay but it may not be that you know they are they are more prone to covid 19 you know infection but once they get infected you know the, the, it's very difficult to control that the infection process that is the first reason i say this is twofold the second reason is that it's a very interesting phenomena and that was discovered long time back i think many years back uh, the uh, a phenomena known as you know warburg effect okay dr warburg has you know he, he for the first time he saw he he saw that in the cancer cells you know the cancer cells are rapidly dividing cells right and they form the tumor right so what's happening is that he he noticed that in the cancer cells you know they have a you know they uh, they have a tendency to uptake glucose you know very increasing amount and the part of the reason is that since you know their metabolic activity is very high because they need to you know grow in they need to produce a lot of cells right so they don't need a lot of glucose uh, for you know generation of atp right uh, through uh, you know the anaerobic or through the glycolysis right so that's why they have a tendency actually they they they, they uptake glucose very fast you know okay. so the not uh, the, the cancer cells you know they they uh, they takes all the glucose from the from the blood stream and what happen is that the normal cell they don't get the glucose so basically the normal cell die but the cancer cell proliferate right so that is the effect it was discovered i think 50 years or 70 years back dr warburg effect and the and the phenomena is still called the dr warburg effect okay so now i am going to connect why there is a connection between that warburg effect and this uh, uh, the covid 19 situation right so what's happen is that as i said that you know the covid in you know, the, the those patients with the covid 19 are diabetic patients if you have a diabetic patient with covid 19 they already have a blood high blood sugar right mm -hmm. so what's happening is that the high blood sugar you know uh, so the virus the covid 19 okay they need glucose to replicate inside the cells 
right yeah. so if you have already have a glucose right so they take up the glucose and they use it to replicate more so basically you know you have you know greater amount of viral load and you try to shed more virus also so that your transmissibility will become higher so so you have a tendency diabetic people have a tendency to transmit you know to infect more people so so seeing this observation there is a very interesting study going on right now in the so you know the dcgi the drug controller general of india so they initiated a study so what they use there is a very fascinating study so instead of uh, taking glucose they are introducing they started a clinical trial they are introducing the 2 deoxy glucose okay so 2 deoxy glucose is an analog of glucose but the thing is that 2 deoxy glucose can bind to the glucose receptor and it can get seen to the in the sars cov infected cells but it doesn't get metabolized okay so right it, it's kind of ghost so it's you know the cells are taking due to glucose but it is not producing giving it the, giving the cells any energy right yeah so 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 that's why their idea is that you know the covid infected cells you know they have a uh, increased tendency to uptake two degree glucose so that they uh, but they, they they cannot be metabolized because not because they are not taking 2d they are not taking glucose right so uh, in that case the cell will eventually die so they actually started a clinical trial uh, and the result has not published yet but this is an interesting effect they make use of that that cell so the to make the you know to make it a, so the bottom line is that the two things one is the high blood glucose increase induces more inflammation in the body so your overall inflammation goes up and the second is that the blood glucose sometimes you know the covid you know they uh, infected they required the covid infected cells you know they for the uh, for the sars to replicate they need a glucose also so that they can use as a glycolysis right so if you can stop introducing the glucose into the cells right yeah. so you can even prevent it so that's to that's the reason why this covid infected in our tab in diabetic patients are more susceptible to the severity of the uh, covid-19 disease but this is one thing there are couple of other thing also due to diabetes there could be some associated complication like cardiovascular disease hypertension that's all adds up oh. so but primarily this is the two underlying mechanism why the diabetic patients are more susceptible to the covid-19 disease yeah so is that clear yeah so diabetic patients uh, uh, deal with severe covid-19 but uh, it is also observed that after covid-19 infection infection some people are developing diabetes and what can be reason behind that yeah that's a that's a great question so okay so the reason is that uh, mm, uh, glad you actually they ask this kind of question so, um, so the question is that the why the uh, uh, so the patients who are initially admitted as a non diabetic right yeah but and they are infected with the covid but they are initially they are non diabetic yeah. but when they are released they become diabetic when they go home they become diabetic okay so that is the question so uh, so uh, there could be couple of reasons so telling you the one study you know uh, i think a very recent study what actually a lot of investigators have shown that in the petri dish you know you grow the human beta cells insulin producing cells in the petri dish and let sars cov 2 to infect the human beta cells okay so they are they want to see that that the sars cov 2 actually can infect the human beta cell in the petri dish right and they showed that actually the sars cov 2 i mean the the virus that actually caused covid 19 can actually infect the human beta cell in the petri dish and also they identified that in the beta cells you know there are some ace2 receptor you might be knowing that the the, the covid 19 uses ace19 receptor to get seen to the cells okay. so in the in the petri dish they identified that the sars cov sieve can infect the human beta cells and they use the ace2 receptor to get into the to the cells so this is the initial investigation so there are couple of other papers you know two papers in the journal in a very prestigious journal called cell metabolism okay so there are two papers came out in cell metabolism two uh, i think couple of months back so from two different group one group is from stanford university and another is performed from the cornell university in new york right so so the, what the investigators have find they find pretty much a similar thing so they did a very interesting study so what they did actually those patients you know you know diabetic patient they actually 
died because of the COVID-19, they went back to the tissue autopsy sample. This is the autopsy sample. Yes. So they investigated the, the pancreatic you know, tissue in the autopsy samples. Okay. And they find out and then and they, and they, uh, what they find is actually in the autopsy sample, they look at the beta cells. Okay. So the beta cells, they, they say uh, they find out that the beta cells has a very low level of uh, insulin granules because the insulin are usually present in the beta cell as granular forms okay and then it gets secreted so the, in the postmortem tissue i mean the autopsy tissue they find out the beta cells have a has very low level of insulin okay and also there could be some secretion defect also so this is one of the study so that could actually explain uh, you know the answer to your question why you know they they have some the covid can um, you know causes type 2 diabetes right yeah. so 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 yeah so the the thing is that the covid is not only infect lung cell it can go on and infect the pancreatic beta cells and it can stop you know the pancreatic beta cells to produce insulin or it can affect the secretion of the insulin to the bloodstream okay so that is one thing so this is not the end of the story and the another interesting uh, findings of that two investigation is that that you know, the, in the in the pancreatic tissue, the islets. You know, it, we have the beta cells which produce, which actually releases insulin, and then there is alpha cells that produces glucagon. That's an another hormone. Okay, the function of glucagon is just the opposite. So insulin keeps the blood sugar at a very you know low level or in a in a control level, but uh, glucagon is actually upregulates the glucose level in the in the in the in the in the bloodstream. So it is just the opposite. So what they find out is very fascinating. They find out that not only the insulin producing cells, they are being, they are destroyed. What are the, what are the, what are the remnants, the remaining beta cells are there, you know, uh, they are converted into alpha cells. Okay. So the insulin producing cells are converted, are being conver are converted into the alpha cells. How did they do it? Right. My thing is that, so they did a, you know, single cell, uh, uh, transcriptomics analysis. What is a single cell transcriptomics analysis? So, if you take a pancreatic tissue, you isolate the RNA, right? So, you have RNA from coming from you know, alpha cells, coming from beta cells, from everywhere, right? So, you don't know actually what is the transcription profile of a specific cell type. So, single cell trans uh, transcriptomics, what it actually lets you to do, you can isolate, selectively isolate the beta cells and alpha cells. And you can look at the transcriptome, transcriptome separately, you know, based on the specific cell types. So what they find out that they looked at the remaining beta cells, you know, they find out that many of the transcription factor or other, they actually required to convert the, which actually needed for the alpha cell to become an alpha cell, they are being expressed into the alpha cells. So this is the process called the trans differentiation. What is the trans differentiation means? You know, you have one cell type called beta cell type, right? And they are, they are, they are converted into a totally different cell type called alpha cell type yeah. with a different function. So the entire process is called uh, trans differentiation and it, it's, and, uh, it's and, the, and it occurs through the uh, reprogramming. Email. It's just called the cellular reprogramming. Okay. So what's in, uh, now I'm going back to in another study why they become the type two that becoming a, so see so they, they this this COVID infected patients you know they have less insulin producing cells okay so they don't produce insulin so since they don't produce insulin so what happened is that the glucose in the bloodstream right they use what the insulin does actually whatever the excess glucose is there you know they are usually converted into a glycogen in the liver. So that, you know, this, you know, if you are in a, in a, you know, in a hunger stage or something, you know, you can always get back from the glycogen. So basically it's the storage mechanism. So glucose, they are taken off from the bloodstream and then they convert, they usually convert it into a glycogen for storage. Okay. Yeah. So since the insulin level is very low because they don't produce insulin. So basically what is going to happen is that the, the conversion of glucose to glycogen is not happening. Right. Yeah. So the glucose level it still is still up, and not only that, what it does actually it actually activates the glycogenolysis. So 
So instead of gluconeogenesis, instead of stimulating gluconeogenesis, the glycogenesis happen. So basically, instead of converting glucose into glycogen, you are making glow, you are making more glucose, and you are secreting into the into releasing into the bloodstream, right? And now I'm telling the what about the beta cells? They are being converted into alpha cells, right? So alpha cell produce glucagon. So the glucagon inhibits gluconeogenesis. Okay, break down of so glucose. that. Yeah, so glucose, so the alpha, the so glucagon doesn't allow glucose to store as a glycogen. Rather, it activates the glycogenolysis, right? So, so, so you can imagine that you know it could be so severe because not only the insulin producing cells they don't produce insulin, but whatever the cells are there, instead of producing insulin, they are producing just the opposite that is glucagon, right? So the so so that's not the reason those patients who are initially non-diabetic, after severe infection, you know, they become diabetics. So eventually they need to have some diabetic medication. Yeah. So is that clear? Yeah, it is clear. So are there any therapies that are being worked on to deal with this? Because it sounds quite severe. Regarding the therapy, right? Yeah, you are talking about. So your so are your question is that you know uh, those patients who are developing diabetes or they are COVID infected patient, whether some new therapy is coming up or not, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So there uh, there are some therapies apart from vaccine, okay? Uh, because the vaccine is always there. But apart from vaccine, you know that you know in a COVID infected patients, the lung tissue get destroyed, right? Yeah. There is a liver. Uh, there is a lung fibrosis also. So lung tissues are being destroyed. There are a lot of other tissues are being destroyed also. Kidney, you know, the liver and everything. So there is a degeneration. You know, the cell death is going on, right? So uh, in our body. You know there are some cells called called the stem cells. So the stem cells has the ability uh, to differentiate into different side type of cell types. Yeah. So if you have if you have the lung and if you have a stem cells, you know the stem cells can be converted into lung tissue. It can be converted into kidney. It can be converted. So it has a multipotent you know stem cells in the body, right? Yes. So since in the COVID nineteen patients, you know there are a lot of generation going on, tissues are lost, you know the, because of this infection so one idea is that since we have the endogenous stem cells in our body right so it's there is a way to activate these endogenous stem cells so that they can be further differentiated into a lung cells in a functional lung cell that's another way another approach is that you know you can isolate the stem cells from a person's patient body okay yeah. So it's very, it's very easy. You can get it from the blood. You can get it from the bone marrow and everything. And then you can isolate the stem cells and reinfuse back to the patients. Yeah. So that there will be some regeneration going on also. So this is. Uh, so what I'm talking about is an autologous because you are taking from the patients and you are giving it back to the patients. So it's an autologous transplantation. And there is another one called the allogenic transplantation, where is the donor is a different, like cord blood. You know the cord blood. They are usually being discarded. You know from the baby when the baby yeah, yeah. is born. The cord. So the cord blood has a potential source of stem cells. Okay. So it's very easy to isolate the stem cells from the cord blood. And the good thing is that those the cord blood are from coming from a different donor, but the cells are less immunogenic. So if you get introduced into the patient's body, they are not going to uh, you know um, um, do a reaction called you know the graft versus host disease. So it's not going to happen the graft versus host in the body. So they are all in the experimental stage because you know the, in in, these, in our country the ICMR the Indian Council of Medical Research you know they have a very strict guidelines about you know how to use the stem cell for regeneration and everything. I think this is a very fascinating concept going on. You know the how can you use the stem cells. To regenerate the damaged tissue in the COVID-19 infected patients. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, is there any harmful effect of COVID-19 vaccination on diabetic patients? So the answer is no. Yes. So, till now, there is no. Actually, you know, actually, those people who are diabetic and who are suffering from other comorbid condition like hypertension or 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 cardiovascular disease and everything, they are actually the first one. You know, uh, the priority group. They should they should be getting vaccinated first because as I told you that you know because uh, since they are 
you know, they have a tendency because if they get infected, you know, they can transmit a lot of people, as I, I explained to you previously also. So this uh, worldwide, all the regulatory bodies, even in India also, you know, they prioritize that the older people and the people who are comorbidity, having the comorbidity type 2, they are the first one to be vaccinated. So your answer is no, there is absolutely no risk for getting vaccinated for the type 2 diabetic patients. Yes, sir. So that's all, sir. My questions are done. Thank you very much for your time and it was very interesting to know about all this and especially that beta cell and alpha cell conversion that I found very interesting to know. I read a lots of article by, but I didn't find anywhere that explanation. So thank you for, thank you very much for that explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Sir. Okay. Nice talking to you. Yes sir. Thank you.